What's going on YouTube? This is part two of our mini series on holding patterns. In this video, we'll be discussing how to enter the holding pattern. Strap in because you're watching episode six, part two of Toolkit. So let's be real. Flying holding patterns are excruciatingly easy. You fly straight and level for a minute, you make a right hand turn, fly straight and level for another minute, make another right hand turn. As an instructor, I notice that students don't mess up holding patterns, students mess up holding entries. They're not too simple. You have to orient yourself in space, figure out where you are in relation to the fix, and then figure out how you're going to orient your aircraft in order to be able to fly the simple racetrack pattern. Before we discuss maneuvering, let's talk about how fast you should fly. In part one of this video, we discussed the maximum holding airspeeds for the United States and internationally. Well, at what point do you slow down from your cruising airspeed to your holding airspeed? According to the FAR AIM, when ATC gives you advance notice of holding, Start your speed reduction to be at or below the maximum holding airspeed allowed at least three minutes prior to crossing the holding fix. If ATC does not give advance notice, go ahead and start your speed reduction as expeditiously as practical. Once you have your airspeed under control, it's time to start thinking about how we're going to actually execute the holding entry. Inside of the United States, these holding entries are recommended. Everywhere else in the world, these holding entries are mandatory procedure and you must do them in order to comply with ATC instructions. So let's get into it. There are three different ways you can enter a holding pattern. The method that you select is based upon your heading relative to the outbound heading of the holding pattern. The three different holding pattern entries are the direct, parallel, and teardrop entries. First, let's talk about the direct entry. The direct entry is used when you're pretty much already aligned with the inbound heading. For the direct entry, you just drive into the fix and turn towards the outbound heading. If you happen to intercept the inbound course prior to intercepting the fix, no big deal. Just drive inbound towards the fix and then execute your turn normally. Next is the offset or teardrop entry. For this entry, find the outbound course and for a standard holding pattern, you'll bug a heading 30 degrees less than the outbound course. Upon crossing the fix, you'll turn to that heading that you just bugged. At that point, you'll drive outbound for a minute, a minute 30, or whatever distance was required by your holding pattern. Once doing that, we'll turn inbound, and then drive inbound on the inbound course like a normal holding pattern. For the parallel entry, upon crossing the fix, we're going to immediately turn to the outbound heading. At this point, we're gonna drive outbound for a minute, minute and a half, or whatever distance is required, then execute a left-hand turn for a standard holding pattern, intercept the inbound course prior to the fix, and then drive in. Once we cross the fix, we'll execute a normal right-hand turn and fly the holding pattern just like normal. So here comes the hard part of any holding pattern, selecting the proper technique. This picture shows the proper holding entry based on your aircraft's inbound orientation relative to the fix. The question now becomes, how do we take the information provided to us by the HSI and determine where on this chart we are in order to affect the proper holding entry technique? Well, first, let's rotate this picture onto its side. Next, we'll mirror the image vertically. With the outbound course dialed in, and proceeding direct to a fix, wherever your heading bug falls on this chart will determine what entry method you will be selecting. Let's simplify this. Anytime I'm preparing to enter a holding pattern, I mentally overlay this picture onto my HSI. In case it wasn't yet obvious, the three letters on this chart stands for parallel, offset, and direct entries. If I need further help visualizing this chart on my HSI, for a standard right hand pattern, I'll raise my right hand and make this symbol with my fingers. From here, 
If my heading bug lies between my index finger and my thumb, I'll be executing a parallel entry. Likewise, if the heading bug falls between my index finger and my pinky, I'll be executing an offset or teardrop entry. Otherwise, we'll be executing a direct entry. And there you go. You now know everything you need to know to safely fly a holding pattern. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, comment, and engage with me. If you know somebody that could possibly use this video, please share it with them and continue to show support. I really do enjoy making these videos, but with work keeping me busy, it's very hard to stay focused and make them. So when you show support, you give me that little extra motivation to get up and put these things together. Thanks for your time. And until next episode, see ya.